Hey guys, it's Dean. Welcome to the Better Man Podcast. Today's episode is a solo episode, and in this episode, I want to talk about the power of being alone, spending time by yourself intentionally for the purpose of self development, for becoming the better version of yourself, for taking the time that you need to to think, to be in an environment where you can think consciously without influence from external sources, and ultimately to be more intentional about the way that you want to live your life. Now that all sounds, as I say that, it sounds very dramatic isn't the right word, but it sounds very powerful. It sounds life-changing, and honestly, it is. So I'm going to tell you the story of how I got the opportunity to go on a I'm going to call it a solo retreat. Basically, I had a day to myself, courtesy of my wife for my Christmas present. And I'll tell you what I did on that day. Um, I'll tell you the questions that I asked myself. I'll tell you how I decided to stay conscious of my own thoughts rather than allow in other sources of thought or other influences. And I'll tell you what I came away with as a result of this process. So this is something that I didn't find this on, you know, I didn't find this template from somebody else. This is something that I just kind of made up myself uh, as I started this this little 24-hour solo retreat, as I'm calling it. And it's been extremely powerful for me so far. So if you are interested in improving yourself, if you're interested in creating meaningful change, creating change that actually happens, um, I think this is a powerful tool that you can utilize if you have the ability to find some time to yourself. And I don't think you even need a full day to do this, but it definitely helped me to have an entire day. Spending a few hours here and there over the course of a few weeks could also be a great way to do this. Um, for me, this just happened uh, to work out. And uh, and yeah, so anyways, let's, uh, let's get into this. So I'm going to call this, again, 24-hour solo retreat. My uh, my wife uh, came to me on the morning of the December 23rd, so a couple of days before Christmas, day before Christmas Eve, and she gave me a present. She gave me a postcard um, that she had created that basically said, hey, I'm giving you a day to yourself. Go to this, this little cabin that I booked for you outside of Austin and just spend a day with yourself. Now, I actually just, uh, a couple of days before that, I had gotten, uh, we had gotten a new puppy. His name is Oakley. And he has been, a, he had been, um, you know, minorly terrorizing the house. So she asked me to take Oakley too. So I got, uh, I got a big bag together of stuff. I took enough, I took enough things that I wanted to be able to go hiking if I wanted to. I took my yoga mat. I took yoga equipment, towels, uh, blocks, strap. I took a foam roller. I took my journal. That was probably the most important thing. I took my journal, some pens, um, a couple of pairs of a couple of different outfits for being able to be outside in the cooler weather. And uh, I got in my car and I drove and uh, it was about 30 minutes away. And I took the phone call to call a couple of people to call my brother and tell him how excited I was to go on the solo retreat, um, to call my, my, my business partner, Edward. Um, to tell him, hey, I'm, you know, this is what I'm doing. Super excited about it, um, and uh, and and yeah. So that's that was the only time that I really called other people during this entire thing, or 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 really texted with other people. I texted Marissa, my wife, a little bit through it. I called her once at night just to check in, um, but otherwise it was just me. So I had some ideas about how I wanted to do this going into it. So I knew that the most important part of this solo retreat would be journaling. So I wanted to bring my journal, but I also wanted to have specific questions to ask myself. And they're not complicated questions. These are questions that everyone can easily think of, things that, uh, things that basic questions that we should ask ourselves on a regular basis. And in, in the context of the end of 2023 and the beginning of 2024, I had a few questions that I wanted to ask myself. So, and I'm reading out of my notebook right now, which I use for the retreat. So, so here are those, these exact questions. What did I like about 2023? What did I not like about 2023? What do I want to do in 2024? And what do I not want to do in 2024? What are my goals? 
how can I improve? And from here, I listed a, a bunch of different roles. I, I, I am a husband. I'm a father. Uh, I'm a son. I'm a leader for the Manful Yoga community. I'm also a business leader for my team members. So those are those are the roles that I listed. How, how can I improve? What do I do well? And what do I not do well? How can I improve as a father? What do I do well? What do I not do well? And, and so on and so forth for all of those roles. And at the end of, so I, I took some time to journal about each of these different topics. And the way that I made sure that this journaling was really effective was I avoided any sort of external influences for the entire time. So I listened to some music, but I didn't bring a book. I didn't watch you know any shows. I didn't listen to any podcast. It was just me listening to my own thoughts instead of being influenced by other thoughts. And that's something that, side note, that's a topic that I've been thinking about, about recently um, for the last few months. And it's something that I've been much more intentional, intentional about um, avoiding, about avoiding other thoughts, avoiding external influences, whether or not I want them to influence me, even the exposure to them influences me subconsciously. So that's a, that's a topic for another time. But anyways, so I wanted to make sure I didn't have any outside influences. So I, um, so I got rid of all of, you know, all of those things didn't, didn't really expose myself to any uh, external influences for the entire entirety of the weekend. I also did made sure that I didn't journal any more than I wanted to. So if I felt like I was getting to a point where I was, you know, hitting a wall or just kind of losing focus, then I was going to fill that time with um, activities to help me kind of restore myself. So those things for me, and I listed them here, uh, box breathing, going for a walk, going on a hike, um, cold water or hot, hot tub contrast therapy. There was a, uh, there was a pool there and one section was heated, one section was not. It was December, so I was able to go back and forth there for contrast therapy. Foam rolling or the cross balling, so I took my mobility tools. Um, those are something I could do. Practicing meditation, being present to the sounds around me. I love being out in nature. I love the sound of rain. It also happened to be raining, so that was easy for me to practice being present with those sounds. Yoga and stretching, um, a gratitude practice. And food, you got to eat, right? So those are the things that I used as breaks during this period. But otherwise, I was journaling. So, um, and then I also wrote, what do I want to come away from this experience with? So I set my expectations for myself at the end of this 24 hours. What do I want to have? And for me, it was having a clearer idea of myself, my goals, free of outside influences. I wanted to clarify, remember my values. Something that I do when I, when I do get time alone, um, so the last time, last instance of this I can remember before December, I was in my uh, my grandparents, I was at my grandparents' house in Door County, Wisconsin. So my whole mom's side of the family lives up there. It's this beautiful, primarily vacation-based city um, in the Midwest. You're surrounded by lakes on either side. It's beautiful. It's great for nature. And the last time that I remember being really in touch with my values and being clear on my values was after going for a hike there. And the thing is that every time I go on these long hikes and I'm able to kind of tap into myself and get clear on myself and my values, I come up with the same answers. So what I wanted to do this time was to be able to use this opportunity as once again to clarify my values, but then also to write them all out and to get really clear on them so that when I did have time to create plans based upon those values, I wouldn't have to go through the value making process first, which is what I've done um, a lot in the past. So now I wanted to come away from this solo retreat with all of these established values in place to make it easy for me to, to easily come back to that and make decisions and, and reflect. So that was, that was something that's basically a vision a uh, vision for my values. I also wanted to come up with a vision for my life for the next year. So this was really important. It still is. Um, I wanted to create kind of the plan for the next year. Um, clarifying the values now, be able to come back to it as a reference. So that's what I wanted to get out of it. For you, you might have different goals. Uh, but for me, as far as using this as an opportunity to kind of recenter and to get clear on my goals, my desires, my values and where I want to go for 2024. That's how I did this. So, and then we started with the journaling. So the first thing that I did was I just wrote, what do I want? What do I want? Which which sounds like a really easy question, 
Um, but it's not for a lot of us who practice, who spend a lot of their time, you know, considering their wants within the context of others. Um, and I'll say being nice, uh, and I won't say that in a good way. Um, that's a topic for another time. Reading a book called, I finished a book called Not Nice, which I really enjoyed. Um, and one of the concepts in there is that, uh, especially if you're a guy with a lot of demands uh, from other people, not demands, but if you have, if you're responsible for other people, then you tend to neglect your own desires and wants. And instead of being direct about what you want, you do it within the context of other people. So for me, I wrote, what do I want? And I just answered the question without any external influences. So I had a whole two pages in my journal of that. Um, so I went through all of those things, just wrote them out. And then I wrote, what do I not want? So I, I scanned my, I kind of scanned my thoughts, scanned my body, and I, I felt my way to these answers. That was another part of this weekend. I didn't want to think. I wanted to feel my way to the answers. I wanted to intuit the answers rather than spend a time being logical about them. I just want, I knew I had the answers already. I just had to feel them. So I wrote all the things that I didn't want. I wrote out all the things that I felt internal resistance to. These are the things that you sh think you should be doing, but you really don't want to be doing. So obviously you're going to have a, you know, there's going to be things in your life that you have to do, even if you don't want to do them. But maybe there are things in your life that you are doing just because you feel you should be doing them. So I wrote out all of those things as well. So I had two pages of what do I not want, two pages of what do I do want. And from there, uh, I went into my reflection. What went well? in 2023, what were the good things? And then I wrote about what were the bad things. And, and, you know, at this point I've got like eight pages and I think I have already taken a break at this point. So the first part took an hour and a half. So it took me, uh, it took me a long time to do all this journaling. You know, if I actually look through all the pages that I have here, I think I had about, yeah, I think I had about 24 pages of journaling here. So a lot of writing down. So anyways, after I wrote what went good in 2023, what went bad in 23? What did I not like? Then I wrote, what do I want for 2024? What are the things that I want? And I, I didn't really restrict myself in my answers. You know, the, the, the point of the initial dump here is to just write out everything. And then my plan was to go back into it later on and then to really start. Um, and then from there to be more intentional about you know, creating an action list or creating, you know, a priority list of some sort. So, so I had my, uh, anyway, so then I wrote, what do I want for 24? What do I not want for 2024? And then I got into kind of my reflection in terms of what do I do well as? So I had two pages, uh, on one side, I wrote the things that I do well. On the other side, I wrote the things that I do not do as well. And this is where I wrote out, what do I do well as a husband? What do I well? With, what do I do well as a father? What do I do well as a leader and as a boss or as a as a manager for my team? And then I wrote out the opposite. What do I not do well as a husband, as a father, as a leader, and as a boss? So I wrote out all these things, and I realized that um, for me, the big thing that was sticking out is for me the big things that were sticking out uh, in, in these reflections. Um, or that I could improve in areas without going into this too far. Because ultimately, guys, I, I really want this podcast to be for you guys. I want you to use this. I want you to be able to use this as a template to reflect on your own life and be intentional about creating a life and actions and plans that are reflective of your values. And so, and so for me, as I was going through this, I just realized, wow, there are, there are things that I can improve. So I say that because... I want you to be able to, these are just examples. Hopefully this is something that you can take and, and practice yourself and you'll come up with your own answers. So then from there, I, I, I came into my goals of, I just wrote about what is, what are my fitness goals for 2024? And uh, I, it came back to, for me, I wanted to keep doing the things that work well for me, uh, to do the challenging movements that don't cause pain and to, uh, to make sure that I was working out with a focus on longevity instead of short term or trying just to just get really jacked with muscle um, at the expense of long term health. And then I and then some of these prompts I didn't actually write down at the beginning. They just came up later. So I wrote down what am I repressing? And that was a question that um, brought up a lot of a, a lot of things that I am 
just not allowing myself to feel or express. And in the context of self improvement, it's incredibly important to it's incredibly important to make sure that we aren't just building and optimizing. I think a goal that I think a mistake that I made with self improvement for many years is that I just wanted to create strategies to be more productive or I wanted tools. And one of the most powerful parts of, of self development of becoming better is figuring out what's holding you back. What are the subconscious um, blocks that you've put in your own path and getting rid of those and addressing those. Those are painful. Those often come with tears. Those often come with, with, with resistance, with feelings of discomfort, with feelings of shame. And those are really tough, but those are the things that are going to help you go faster, go further. So if we think of self-development and the analogy of you going on a walk, when you go on a walk and you have a 20 pound weight tied to your waist and you're dragging it along behind you, it makes things really difficult. So yes, you could do things to make your body stronger and, and make you walk faster, but if you have that 20 pound weight holding you back, you're not going to go as fast as you want to. So it's a really good idea to figuring out these things that you're repressing, things that you are not allowing yourself to feel, things that are truly part of you. And you need to be able to confront, acknowledge all the different parts of you to accept, to love all those parts. And that's not an easy process. And that's not something that doesn't just automatically happen. It's something that we peel back layer by layer. Um, but it, it does take effort. And so for me, when I wrote, what am I repressing? I, the goal here was trying to figure out what are the things that I'm doing to hold myself back? And for me, those things were not expressing myself, particularly to loved ones, particularly to people in my family, um, making, not making time for myself. Um, and also a lot of selfish thoughts, things like I want to be stronger and more mus more muscular. I want to, uh, I want more time for myself. I want to be more successful with my business. So, so I wrote down things that, you know, I, I want to make more money. These are things that I wrote down that I was repressing, that I wasn't being honest with myself about, but were there. And the goal here is again, getting, getting rid of some of those subconscious barriers that are, that I'm holding myself back. So after I did all those things, I went through, I went back through this list. I took some time. Um, I think I did this the following morning. Um, I did all these, you know, all this journey. I think I journaling. I think I finished by um, the morning after that. And then I uh, had some breakfast, came back to it. And I looked at this, you know, I looked at this list. I went through all these things and I looked at what's sticking out. So I looked for themes. I looked for patterns. And the things that I came up with for me were uh, a lack of authenticity or a lack of uh, a lack of truthful expression, not just expressing things or at, or saying the truth when prompted, but letting but expressing things that I felt, expressing things that I felt without being prompted. So um, those are the things that I was repressing, holding back, saying not saying the things that I thought might make other people uncomfortable. I also realized I had a desire for deeper connection and, and deeper fulfillment, overall, just more depth. I wanted more than surface. I wanted deeper connections with, with my family, with, with potential customers, with friends. Um, I wanted deeper connections. I also wrote, uh, doing less. So minimizing day to day so that I can be more present and have time for the things that matter. This was something that, uh, that was, that, that kind of hit me in the face. I realized that I had been rushing to do everything that I was always in this go, go, go mode. And that it was this, it came from this desire to want to accomplish more because I needed to accomplish more in order to be loved, in order to feel worthy. And so by doing less, I am allowing myself to be more present, to recognize that I'm already worthy now, that I don't need to do anything more to be worthy of love or to be enough. And by practicing doing less, I could practice being worthy uh, or the record or the, the, the knowledge that I am worthy now, that I am enough now. 
It would also give me more time creating, uh, doing less would also give me more time for my selfish needs, for my personal growth, um, for my energy for myself, that I would have more energy later in the day. I, um, I tend to get kind of really tired um, by the middle of the day because I, my mornings are, they feel so busy. They feel so rushed. So by me having time to myself, um, doing less, I would have more time in the evenings for my family. And then also I'd have more time in the afternoons for my workouts because that's, that's when I do my main workout around three or four o'clock. And then the other thing that really came up with, uh, is doing what works. So, um, I, I had a lot of lessons in 2023, um, some business failures, some, um, some life failures, some relationship failures. Um, and I learned things from that, that I need to remember to do what works instead of doing the things that don't work, instead of repeating things um, with the expectation that there will be a different outcome. So that was another really big theme. Um, having less stress at home. That was one thing that I wrote about. I was just really stressed at home because I was scared that I wasn't doing the right things. I was scared that I wasn't contributing enough, um, scared to have conversations around difficult topics or, t or sensitive subjects. And that was something that was causing a lot of stress for me. So after I did all of that, I wrote, what do I want to do in 2024? And so I wrote out all of those things. Um, I also addressed the question, how can I reduce stress at home? And then I typed all of this up. And it actually took me about 30 minutes to type all of this up, um, which is kind of surprising. So it took me about 30 minutes to transcribe all of these notes. And then I went through them again, and I came up with six values for myself. And so this is just what I did. You're welcome. You, you can or cannot do this. I think it's I think it's a good idea for you to go back through your journaling in this process and to come up with a pattern. Look for patterns. Look for you know. Look for patterns. Look for similarities. Look for things that stick out. And for me, there were six different values that came out of this. And for the last month, I have been practicing these values. I've been writing out how I'm going to implement these values on a weekly basis. I've been repeating the values to myself. I printed them up and I put them in my office so I could look at them. And here are the values and kind of in importance, in order of importance. The first was create space. So create space in my life. Basically, do less. Create space so that I can think. Create space so that I have more awareness and more ability to create change. Create space so that I'm not rushing everywhere. So that I am remembering that I'm worthy now, that I'm enough now, that I don't have to accomplish more in order to feel good enough. So the first value was create space. The second value is practice authenticity. So there's a lot of ways to do that. But for me, it meant expressing my true feelings and particularly with close ones. You know, I, this isn't something that I need to do with everybody that I meet, but particularly with loved ones, particularly with people who are close to me, it's important for me to express my true self instead of putting on some sort of, you know, putting on some sort of charade or holding myself back somehow or not expressing what I'm truly feeling. And that was really uncomfortable for the first couple of weeks that I did it. But honestly, um, my life has really improved since embracing this value of practicing authenticity. The third thing is deepening connection. So um, this means leaning into vulnerability. This means being um, trying to, this means putting myself into that uncomfortable feeling of vulnerability and having conversations, um, talking about things that make me feel disconnected. So you know, if you're realizing that there is something that you're not expressing and that's preventing you from having connection with people you're close to, then those are things that I now talk about because I don't talk about all of it. Some of it is not, some of it's still, I'm not, still not comfortable enough to express all of it, but I am doing more of it now, expressing things that I am previously would not. The, the fourth value is being present. And so for me, that's something that I still need to journal about. It's on my to-do list this week. But for me, being present just means um, being there. It means focusing on what's in front of me and not worrying about what I'm doing later. But being present, um, being there, being immersed in what I'm doing. The fifth thing is prioritize self-care. So a lot of that goes back into this, you know, this idea of creating space, of giving myself time to take care of myself. Because I know that if I take care of myself, I will implement all of these values way better than if I don't take care of myself. Um, if I practice authenticity, I am able to express my need to take care of myself. So a lot of this, you know, kind of fits in with one another. But uh, value number five for me was practice self-care, prioritize myself. And then the sixth value that I wrote is do the things that work. 
So I know that there are things that work for me. I, I've been, you know, doing most of these things for years now. Things like walking, things like doing yoga, um, sauna, cold plunge. You know, those are lower on the list, but they they're really cool, right? I mean, saunas are saunas are great. Cold plunges are great too. Um, they're just sometimes uncomfortable. Um, journaling, uh, a gratitude practice at night, meditation before I go to bed, um, writing out the things that I want to do in the morning. So there are things that I do that work, and it's up to me to, to remember to do those things. So that's kind of what I did, wrote about. I asked myself some basic questions. I looked back at my answers later on, and I found the commonalities. I found the patterns from those. I created values for myself, things that were important for myself, and then I created an action list of things to do to start working on those things. And I went, first I looked at the things that were most important. I looked at things that could be done with a single action, and then I looked at things that were more of a habit that had to be practiced. And I listed those out in order. So um, so now I have a plan. I have things that I'm doing. Um, I'm reflecting on a regular basis about those six values and how I did them, how my performance was with them the previous week. So taking some time on a Sunday to kind of think about that. For me, it, it didn't happen until after my kids went to bed at about nine o'clock, but it happened. And then on Monday morning, taking some time to think about how I'm going to practice those values in my life that week. So this is something that you can do yourself. Uh, I think it was an amazing experience for me. Actually, I was there. I, de I decided to myself that I'm going to do this once a quarter, or once every four months. We'll see how that works. But uh, I definitely want to do it every, uh, at least every four months. And it's something that for me, I think is going to be really powerful moving forward. So hopefully this gives you some inspiration to try out your own solo retreat. This only took a day. And then uh, when you did, by the way, when you do get bored of journaling or you just find yourself burning out, that's when you do something restorative, like, you know, go for a walk, um, you go get some food, you do some foam rolling, you do some yoga, you find a pool, you jump in it, you get cold, whatever it is. Uh, but hopefully that's a process for, that's a kind of a template for you to do some thinking yourself and to maybe be more intentional about your self-improvement for this year. So hope that helps. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Um, if you haven't already, consider leaving a review on the Better Man podcast. It's on uh, Apple Podcast, on Spotify, um, and Google Podcast is no longer a thing, phasing out there. Um, but anyways, leave me a review if you could. If you haven't already started with Manflow Yoga, we have a free seven-day challenge specifically made for men who are new to yoga and inflexible. You can sign up for that at manflowyoga.com slash 7DC. Thanks, guys, for being here. Thank you for being part of the Manflow Yoga community, and I will see you on the next episode. If you like that episode, check out this other one right here. I think you're really going to enjoy it. If you haven't subscribed, click this subscribe button over here, and you can listen to the full episodes on any major podcasting platform. Full details below in the description.